let's go ahead and start. Um, just how how are things going? How does it feel now to after 30 years of public service to, to be out of the game? Well, it's actually more than 30 years because I was 13 on the county board. So it's like 43 years out of government. <laughs> and, uh, you know, right now um, we've gone through holidays. So I can't tell you that I've experienced retirement fully. Um, been pretty busy the last few days. So um, catch, catching up with life. And, you know, I closed my offices. So my garage and my dining room table have lots of activity on them and I've got to sort out everything. So talk about some of the things that you're most proud of over your career. I would say probably I'm, I'm most proud of two constitutional amendments that I got passed. It's not every day that you can get a constitutional amendment passed. That means the public of New York State has to vote for them. And the first um, I thought was very significant when I first got there and read the New York State Constitution, it was all about men. And so what we did was we made it gender neutral uh, to be sure that women were also included. You know, I was a, 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 an assembly woman and I wasn't mentioned in that, uh, nor was uh, our governor, um, you know, back then, Governor Hochul uh, would, wouldn't have been mentioned. Um, and of course, the Court of Appeals um, uh, judge, um, uh, Judith Kay, you know, at that point was not mentioned in the constitution. So we got it changed. And, you know, frankly, it was really hard to get it because a lot of people said, well, what does it matter? Uh, but it does, you know, words do matter and we're learning more and more that symbols matter. The other constitutional amendment that I got passed was to get rid of, um, or to change the policies in the New York State Assembly, uh, because long ago we had to have paper on our desks, all the bills had to be on our desks. They might've been strung up in long, very long packets um, and you couldn't get to them, but they had to be on our desk. And, you know, we're in a different age now. Um, so we now have tablets or computers on our desk and we don't have to have the paper. We've saved trees, we've saved uh, the economy, we saved a lot of staff work um, in an unnecessary way. So I'm very proud of those two constitutional amendments. Not everybody gets to do two. <laughs> what are some of the concerns you carry forward that um, in your region that, that you hope will come to fruition or change in the future? I think we always have to worry about the taxing issue. And I was the real property tax chair in the assembly. So I, I really delved into that a lot. We have to make sure that in the future, we protect the STAR program, school property tax relief program. For us, uh, you know, in, in Westchester and, and many of our communities, this is a very significant program to lower our taxes. And, um, and you have to work at it because not everybody uh, cares about it quite as much. And uh, it does cost, you know, over $3 billion a year. So um, you have to work to protect it. I'm very pleased that the circuit breaker went into effect. I, I, I introduced legislation on that probably I'd say 15, 16 years ago. You, you never give up in this, in this realm <laughs> because you never know when things are, are going to really happen. But two years ago, we actually put the circuit breaker bill into the budget and now people um, will be, as they're doing their income tax, which they did last year and then this year, not this year, but uh, 2021 and 2022, that um, if you pay more than 6% of your household income for property taxes of all sorts, um, that you will get uh, a return from the state government. Um, you have to do this in a form on your income tax and it's a rebate. And I'm hoping that in the future, you ask me in the future, I hope that grows because what we're trying to do is help the people who need the help the most with the lower incomes. And it may be helping, uh, well, people with lower incomes, but also seniors uh, and others uh, be able to manage their properties and keep, keep their homes. So, um, you know, I think that that's very important as we go forward. What would you say was your most memorable moment as an assemblywoman? There are lots of memorable moments. Uh, the one was, I was in an attempted coup. I may not look like a person that would basically 
trying to throw out the Speaker of the Assembly, but I did. Uh, when I got to Albany, um, I realized that um, our Speaker at that point um, was controlling everything, and there was no reason for me to come to Albany. I'd drive home and I'd say, why am I there? They just want my yes vote. They don't want me to talk. They don't want me to, you know, legislate. It's just, um, you know, just, just be there and vote yes. And I decided that's not the way government should be. That's not democracy. And so um, there was an attempted coup to get rid of the speaker. And I was very much a part of it. I stayed with it to the very end. I think I was probably one in maybe out of 150 uh, assembly members, it was probably, uh, uh, well, of Democrats, there were about 107. Uh, I, I stayed with it. There were only about 12 of us um, that did not, uh, that stayed with it. Others, others gave up because uh, there's a lot of pressure. There was pressure from the unions, there were pressure from the speaker, there were pressures from um, getting member items, there were pressures from office staff and all kinds, of, or pressures from um, having a, a, a challenge in your primary. So um, now I lost, um, but that was okay because, well, it wasn't okay, but it was okay. Um, I ended up, um, we, we changed the legislature. And now with Carl Hasty as the Speaker of the Assembly, he has, he has emerged as a very different kind of speaker, one that reaches out to all of my colleagues, uh, asks for our opinions, uh, listens to us at all of our conferences. And, um, you know, I think he's, he's, he's been exceptional. And that grew out of having a speaker that was not exceptional that actually ended up going to jail. I wanted to ask you about your predecessor, uh, Dana Levenberg, who actually was on your staff at one point right. before going into her own, uh, running for her own races. Uh, tell me about her and what your hopes are for her future in this position. Well, I think she'll do an excellent job. Obviously, you know, I worked with her for eight years. Um, she was on the school board, actually, with my son. So I got to know her indirectly that way. And she's been town supervisor. So we've, we've worked together for a long time. And um, she's just going to be a great assembly woman. And, um, you know, Carrie, I, I, I think she's looking at many of the bills that I have that that didn't get adopted um, to put in. Um, she'll have her own ideas. She's been very involved with the environment and climate change and uh, very creative and very progressive on those kinds of legislation. And, um, you know, she picked up so many ideas and, and information from working in my office. It's got to be very, very helpful to her. My last question for you is what the future holds for you. What is the next step? Uh, are there any other positions that you would like to hold as far as elected positions? I don't think I want elected positions, but I'd, I'd like to serve on, um, you know, some boards of interest and I'll have to think about that. Um, I'm certainly going to continue my work with developing a Sing Sing Historic Museum. Um, that's I, I, I've worked on that for <laughs> so many years. I can't give up on it. And hopefully we'll get that done. Uh, I'm planning on a few vacations. I've never been able to travel between January and the end of June. So I actually have two trips planned. Um, and... Uh, one, one of the trips is to Washington, D.C. to study foreign policy, um, meet with ambassadors, former ambassadors. I thought that was that would be very interesting. And my other trip is, is planned to, um, to go to a film festival. Uh, I love movies, so that's a little bit not as, as uh, <laughs> educational, but it is and seeing a lot of foreign films and, and so on and having discussions about people's lives in different countries. So maybe I'm expanding into the world a little bit. I don't, I don't know, but we'll see what happens next. Well, congratulations on 30 years service for New York State. Thank you for everything you've done. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Nadia. Have a good new year. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.